Hey guys, Fun and Neutral. I just wanted to do a quick video about my Yamaha XT250 accessories that I've reinstalled on the bike since I got the 2022. I did release a previous video from my 2020 Yamaha XT250 that had my accessories on it. I've added, I think, one more accessory besides what was on that video to this bike. I just want to do a really quick recap on the accessories that I chose and just give you my feelings on them since you know I bought them twice and I've installed them twice so I feel like I can give you a little bit of good opinion in case you're considering getting this particular accessory for your bike so let's get started before it rains it looks like it really is wanting to so I'll start from the front work my way to the back and I'm going to try and not to ramble on. I'll just hit the key features and start, you know, giving you my thoughts. I love this decal from the Mandalorian. Um, definitely use a lot of rubbing alcohol if you're going to go and put in any type of decals on your plastics because that really helps them to stick better. I got that off Amazon. This is the headlight guard that I mentioned previously. This one went on just as easy as the last one, with the exception I had to buy a little bit longer metric screws to sandwich everything in this time because I decided to put some rubber grommets in between as not to put the metal against the plastic. I don't want any fracturing. Besides that, it, uh, it's on there solid found my carbon Yamaha badges again those do have 3m sticky stuff on the back so they stay put once you put them on have one there one there one there one there those are really nice quality decals or badges parabellum windscreen I really like it it was throwing the wind right at my eye level, so I decided to upgrade it with a Puig um, small size windscreen, windscreen extender deflector. This fit right on really good. You could see the little plastic bits in there holding it on. It's very adjustable, and I have it adjusted straight up and down because that throws the wind up and it's now putting the wind right at the brim of the peak of my helmet and I'm five foot six so what it did is it stopped the wind from buffeting me at eye level and it's kind of tossing it a little bit over the top of my helmet which definitely helps and I think for you guys that do a lot of audio it will help a little bit and I'm not going to lie and say it stops all the buffeting it doesn't but it yes it definitely helps because um prior to installing that it was it was you know i could feel it tossing my helmet around also if you're in a bug prone area this will help catch a lot of the bugs versus hitting you you know right here when you're driving and then you got to look at the dead bug right there and that drives me crazy because my eyes always go right to a dead bug on my goggles storm bark busters these are really cool the vps ones are nice too but i always found myself having to adding the extensions on the vps you don't have to do that with these it's plenty of coverage for big hands gloved hands for winter summertime it's no problem but the bar end externals because these don't come with any type of bar and weights stock so i added these real quick note if you go to add bark busters you do not need to cut this lip off of your uh, clutch side grip you can leave it on just make a little dime size hole at the end and this goes on perfect you will need to cut the lip off here but do it at the very very edge don't cut any more or you're going to have too much rubber cut off and this little bit in here if you guys can see that plastic thing it's like a little disc 
I assume it's to help the throttle not get caught up on this over here. I just don't remember that on my 2020 being floppy like that. So if you guys have this little disc in here that moves around, let me know. I'm just curious. Is it supposed to be that way or should I jam my rubber grip over that way some more? If you don't mind sharing with me what your thoughts are on that. I reinstalled my Moto Wolf. That's one accessory that I did keep. My Moto Wolf bar brace. Glad I did. This is the only one I could find that fit in here with my Bark Buster bra uh, braces. I guess that's what they're called. And I really like this because it gives you a little bit more security if the bike falls so your handlebars won't bend. And it cuts down on the vibration. You know, another cool thing about the Yamaha grips right here is the waffle, the waffling that you could see kind of on the bottom. I can get it to, you know what I'm talking about, the waffle grip. Yamaha was nice enough to make it smooth on top so it doesn't chew into your hand. My Honda Trail 125 ones, the waffles all the way around and the top part really digs in your hand. I ended up putting grip puppies on my Trail 125 grips because it was just too, I guess I, I got tender hands, I don't know. But it was pretty cool how Yamaha thought about that. And you can even see how they contoured this lip I was talking about to make it smooth and contours out. They just really thought of everything with this bike. I'm really impressed with the engineers. Uh, the angle of the mirrors is really nice. It's one of the first mirrors that I didn't have to buy extenders for. Besides my CB500X, those are wide enough. Um, See, I got the BMB master cylinder guard from Australia. You're going to have to wait a little bit if you order one from ProCycle, but it's worth the wait. It goes on really easy. I just took off uh, one bolt at a time, so I didn't have to really fight with it a lot to get it reattached. And I used some Loctite in here just to be on the safe side. But it wraps around really nice, covers the back side. And the really cool thing about it is, I like those little three little cool looking stripes. Matches right up with the Flatlands skid plate. You can see the two have those little three stripes, so it matches really well. This Flatlands skid plate is really, really nice. It offers like some flared out coverage and it protrudes out enough to where you could see your bike falls over maybe to catch some of it. I still think your engine cases should have those round plastic hard covers that they sell. I think they sell them in Japan. I might get some, I don't know. But Flatlands skid plate, really nice. Nice and thick and robust and you could change your oil with it in place without getting too messy on the bottom side of the skid plate with oil spattering. It, it does a pretty good job of clearing it. I um, already talked about my YNS rubber inserts for my stock pegs. So far so good with those. You could take them on and off really easy with one nut if you want to do a bunch of off-road stuff where your boots are going to get wet. Delcovec exhaust I've already talked about previously. I love it. This is my favorite Delcovec thus far because it's not too loud and it's not too quiet no issues at all with burning my plastics and the carbon fiber you can touch right after you shut the bike off so even this bracket here you can touch it won't burn you that of course will burn you and right here will burn you but it's tucked in so if you're worried about stuff touching this like luggage or whatever i think it'll be okay briefly i mean I had no idea that you could touch carbon fiber when it's hot as balls, but I learned that recently. Um, Flatlands rear cargo rack. This is more of like a rally rack. It's really small. It mounts right up. You can leave your little handles on that. I do love these. I love these handles for lugging your bike around in the garage and for tie down purposes. A lot of the racks you'll find 
you got to take these off. I wanted to find a rack where I could keep these. I just love them. So this is one of the only racks I could find. It's kind of small, I know. But you guys doing big trips, it might not be the rack for you. But this is, uh, it fits my little Enduro Stand Rally Pack perfectly. The Enduro Stand Rally Pack is waterproof. Lots of pockets on the inside. It goes on well. It comes with its own hardware. I bought my own hardware there because I wanted some stainless and some locking nuts on the bottom side so they don't vibrate loose. Um, trying to be fast because I don't want to be boring. I don't, oh yeah, my, uh, the pigtail I recommend doing, especially you guys that put your bike in storage. You can't ride it during the winter. Cool thing too, lately I found out that there's a USB you could plug into here to charge your devices. So that's pretty cool besides keeping your battery charged up. And I got a license plate, uh, you know, liner. I like that. The, I like it having that on there just for the bling aspect. That's really not a big accessory, but looks nice. So there it is. That's my 2022. I think I covered all the things I added. Basically the same things with the exception of the Puig. Um, deflector, same stuff as my 2020. So I was really happy with those accessories and I'm happy all over again adding them to my 2022. The seat, I remember I uh, mentioned to you guys how much I love the seat. It is very cushy. However, I've got a, uh, a really bad low back, really bad. And any type of discomfort gets to me pretty quick. And uh, I have hardware in my low back. And so I don't want my pain to dictate my ride duration. So I am considering getting an aftermarket seat. Um, Victoria Z, I reached out to her and asked her her thoughts because I think she's a guru when it comes to the XC250. And uh, she said that, that this stock seat usually breaks in between five and 7,000 miles. Gets a lot more comfy. But there are people that she knows that use seat concepts. They're one of the leaders for the aftermarket seat for the XT250 and a lot of other dual purpose bikes. A lot of happy campers using that seat. However, I'm not real keen on trying to do that myself. Um, I have a little concern of, with doing all that. Um, I may consider getting the Corbin XT250 seat. I like my Corbin on my Honda CB500X. It widens the saddle and spreads out your butt so you not have as many pressure points. So that's something I am kicking around. They're expensive. And I don't see a lot of reviews on the Corbin XT250 seat. Um, I actually haven't found anybody that says they have one. If any of you have one, let me know if you like or dislike it. But I am considering getting one, and I'll be the guinea pig to see if I like it. Plus, it would be cool to keep my OEM seat for really dirty stuff and funky stuff. Because I, I like to get leather on my other seat, the Corbin, if I get one. That's it. I went through that really fast. If you have any questions about the accessories... Feel free to ask, and also look at my 2020 video. It has all the links for the stuff I talked about. Besides the Puig windscreen extender, I'll put that link in this video. And I will catch you guys next time. And let me know your thoughts about that little disc thing on the throttle side in between the uh, switch assembly and the rubber. If you guys, yours is floppy, I'd appreciate it. Catch you later.